Unmuted. Monday night. Man. I have reservations Monday. Ready, folks. I think. Yeah. Are you ready? I'm in that. Yep. Okay. I'll call this Town of Isle Haven Board of Selectmen's meeting to order for Thursday, June 13th, 2024. Roll call is Tom Anthony, Don Young, Leslie Dyer, myself, Elizabeth Bunker, and Marjorie Stratton. And I did not ask, but do we have, didn't have any additions, correct? Interesting. If you want to add that correspondence from, yeah, okay. I mean, it doesn't matter. Do you want me to, or? It's, uh, it's okay. really up to you. It's, All right. It's really up to you. It was addressed to the board, so I brought it to your attention. Okay. Did you have that here? I handed it back up. Yeah, the letter. I gave it to Tom. Tom read it, and then he handed it back. Where'd it go? Um, anyway, um, I'll just put that under communications. Sure. sure. So I don't have to add. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, number two, approve agenda. So moved. Second. All in favor? Number three, minutes. Approve the minutes from the May 28th, 2024 and June 4th, 2024 meetings. So moved. Second. Second. Approve and sign treasurer's warrants number 50. Oh, we don't have. Oh, we, we already, did, it. We already did that. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yep, that's right. Um. Strike that. Number five, communications. Uh, we received a letter from uh, Lawrence J. Larry, Larry Steers. Uh, he just wanted to let the selectmen know that effective June 18th, he's retiring as executive chair of the Star of Hope Foundation. Um, and he wrote a, you know, a nice letter to the board and if you haven't had an opportunity to read it, you want to? Anyway. I already read it. So right. Do you want to pass it? I mean, you can share. I'll take you a look at it when you get a chance. Yep. All right. Speakers from the floor. <laughs> Seeing none. Good. <laughs> Don't all speak at once. Yeah, really. Uh, number seven, committee and departmental reports and appointments. 7A, Wooded and Curran. Um, you know, okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Me? No. Oh. Um, that is just the status report, correct? Right. Does anybody have any questions about that? No, but no. it's very forward. Yep. So it means uh, downtown project 7B. Gabe, I guess. You... Hi. Yes, Hi, I just... Gabe. Hi everyone. Yeah, I just Hi. wanted to check in and um, give give as a you know status report. Um, so, um, I think I think when Brent was here last time, we you know we were in the midst of talking with folks about the parking lot. Um, and I think we had some good conversations. Um, as I mentioned when uh, at the last meeting. Um, there's a lot to kind of sort out in terms of, you know, people's recommendations, preferences, suggestions. Um, there were a lot of questions about, you know, will elevating the parking lot cause problems for the adjacent property owners? Meaning like all of a sudden we have a high elevation or a higher elevation. Is the water going to flow with more uh, strength, vigor toward those other properties? Is that going to exacerbate the flooding? Um, so there, there are some, I think, legitimate questions out there, sort of like, you know, if we're not elevating everything, um, what is the impact of elevating one thing? And I think that's a good question. Um, and, you know, I'm not an engineer. I, 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 I I haven't modeled that, but, you know, someone just sort of pointed out was like, well, when water flows with force and you put an object it that's higher than everything else, it pushes against that object and flows around it. I mean, that seems straightforward, but like I said, I'm not an engineer. So um, I think we're trying to, you know, we're trying to ask the, um, the, I guess it would be the, the folks that do the like hydraulics and, and, um, 
and that's not probably not the right word. Um, the high the hydro geol. Well, anyway, I'm not going to try to get, <laughs> guess what that engineer is. There's one that's engineer okay. that does the does the water uh, modeling, <laughs> um, and so yeah. So anyway, um, there are also many questions that can. There are many many responses that conflict because there isn't a clear vision or direction or um, directive from the town in terms of use of the parking lots. So meaning like, are we supposed to design more for one business versus the other? Or are we trying to accommodate all businesses in both parking lots? So I know there's been, you know, like, like some of the fishermen have said, you know, elevating impacts us um, because, you know, we can't, we're not going to be able to lift the traps up. Um, on, you know, it's it's going to be harder for us to do that. Um, and there isn't enough room at the fish plant wharf for everyone to use that who currently uses the downtown parking lot. Um, there's been just, you know, even from Jim himself, just the challenges of managing um you know, trap storage and the amount of time that traps are are sitting there, meaning when when traps are sitting there, other people can't load and unload traps because there just isn't any space to do that. So I'm saying all of this because I have a list of feedback and a lot of it conflicts, you know, so our job, you know, or so I say my job and then working with like Pam and Marjorie um, and, and Brent is to take all of the feedback that we've gotten and try to move forward with the next iteration of the design. Um, so I think what's going to happen is, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to do that and we're going to talk about it at our Monday project meeting. But I'm saying this because I think either prior to the next version of the design or in response to the next version of the design, I think it's going to really behoove the select board to like look at the design and, you know, say like, is this, you know, is this what we want, you know, do, you know, or, or, you know, what are, are, are we supporting all businesses with these designs? Are we trying to support all businesses? Um, so, I I guess I just wanted to share all that because I don't think it's straightforward simply because you know we don't have um a, basically right now we're just trying to accommodate everybody which in my opinion is a great idea but it means that you know we need to make sure that the fishermen are not impacted negatively in the downtown and the fish plant parking lot we need to make sure that other businesses that use both parking lots are not impacted we need to make sure the adjacent property owners aren't going to be impacted negatively. So there's just a lot of considerations. And I, I think, you know, we're not going to be able to achieve all of our goals um, unless we, actually, that's probably not what I want to say. I was going to say, unless we negatively impact somebody, but I just, I'm seeing the challenges of, of what we're trying to do with elevating. And um, so I think, you know, we're going to have to have a conversation about some of the the components and, you know, the decisions that we want to make about, about particularly the downtown parking lot. But Gabe, I have a question. Yeah. Would it make sense to put a lift in the town parking lot because they are elevating it 18 inches and a, a lift would help with that? Uh, like a hoist? A hoist, yes. Yeah, I mean, that was, that was, that was suggested by some of the fishermen. Sorry, Gabe. Sorry. Go ahead. Say again. Um, no, I was to say that was definitely suggested by some of the fishermen we spoke with that, you know, that could then alleviate the problem. I mean, it would just right. be one, one area where people could load and unload, but one area is better than, you know, no area. And um, yeah, so I think if we're willing to like it would mean we would be specifically designating area in the downtown parking lot that is for commercial fishing and i don't think you know we've we've really kind of consciously 
done that yet. Other, you know, it's like we've, we, the area is available, but it's also available for whomever. So I think right. if, the, if the, if the, like, if the select board wants to make that decision, like we're going to, we're going to designate this particular area that there's going to be a hoist and it's going to be for commercial fishing, then that would certainly, I think, go a long way in supporting the fishermen that use that area, um, assuming that we're still elevating um, the parking lot. I mean, I think if we end up realizing that it's going to negatively impact everybody around the parking lot um, by elevating it, we might want to make some different decisions than that, in which case then that question of, you know, are fishermen going to be negatively impacted by elevating the parking lot, that kind of goes away. I'm not saying we're not going to elevate it. I'm just saying, I think we have some some serious things to think about in terms of the impact of elevating it. Okay. Any other questions for Gabe? I do have one more thing um, just related to funding, which is, I think I mentioned this before, but um, we've, we've just kind of looked at the various options for generating some more grant funds um, to, you know, try to meet the need of the project um, since it has come in, the phase one has come in over budget. So there is, um, I think I mentioned this before, a state, a one-time state opportunity that's actually pretty good it's it's going to be um you know up to there's up to four million dollars that you can apply for for construction um we are eligible to apply um it it <clears throat> you're not supposed to well anyway i won't get into those details but i it just talking through it it seems like you know we can put together an application for kind of like what we need for phase one um it is going to require a 5% match. And Marjorie and I talked about this on um, Friday. Oh, no, sorry. It is Friday. No, it's Thursday. Sorry. We talked about this yesterday, I think. Um, and uh, there's, you know, assuming the budget passes on the 26th, um, there there will be money in that resilience reserve that that you set up. And we could use that as the match. But that was assuming we were going to ask for 1.5 million. And the way the budget is turning out, the 5% might be more than $75,000. It might be like $125,000. So I'm just putting that out there now because there may be, um, you know, a need to to find uh, some additional match, which I'm sorry to say that, um, but 5% really is a good opportunity. And if we were to get these funds, we could actually have them before the end of the summer, which is pretty amazing. Um, so anyway, um, I'm going to work on that. There's another opportunity through USDA that I think we might look at pursuing, which is a zero match uh, grant. It just might take a little longer to get the funds. But um, anyway, just letting you know, those two things are out there. We are actively searching for more money. I can't believe I'm saying that because it seems like we've done that for a long time now. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm just grateful there are still some pots of money out there that we might be able to access. So that's what I got. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Gabe. Thanks, Gabe. <clears throat> um, C, Public Works. And that is just to um, go over Melanie's well, this weekly. Was a, this was an older report, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. She sent one up. She sent an email set with this week's, but oh yeah, there was no attachment. Oh. Sent it like right shortly before the meeting. Oh, okay. Four ish. I get. I don't know. I don't. You know. I would didn't look at my emails. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> So catch it next week. I'm sorry. Catch that next meeting then. Yeah, if anybody has anything they want to say. In her email, she also recommended the vehicle towing thing. Mm -hmm. Hold That's off. In there. I mean, the packet she sent to the email is printed in this packet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In her email even. today, she mm -hmm. hasn't heard any feedback from Knox County right. yet. So she recommended right. we wait. Right. Oh, okay. That was in the email. I like yes. I said, I didn't look at my emails. Um um yeah we want to make sure that 
we do that correctly. Um, okay, yeah. So public works is, um, okay, D, 7D, Sea Level Rise and Climate Committee. Linnell. Mm -hmm. Hi there. Hi, Linnell. Well, I'm doing technical stuff, which is, you know, not working. <laughs> Hang on. This is going to work. Gabe, Gabe, yep. Gabe, Gabe is going to make it work. I'm going to make it work. It's all there good. There we go. Can you see my screen? You're a pro, Linnell. Yeah. Yep. It looks don't, great. Don't, don't get carried away there. I think most of you know me. I'm Linnell Mather. I have been a member of the Sea Level Rise and Climate Committee since it was established in 2016. And we just want to give you a brief update on what we've been up to since Molly Miller last reported two months ago. Um, the first thing on our little list here is the crib wave attenuator at the ferry, at which I'm going to point, I'm going to turn things back to Gabe because she knows about this and I don't. Yeah, I think everyone knows that we did apply for the Coastal Community Shore and Harbor planning grant for this. Um, it did require a little bit of match that Marjorie and I spoke about um, in terms of um, where that would come from. It looks like there's some money in the Harbor Reserve that could match that. But what this would do if we get funded is uh, just look at that the current um, condition of the crib work wave attenuator and explore through, um, you know, does and design like design a solution um, that would help maximize more tie up space there. Um, I mentioned last time possible exploration of that, you know, that conversation around emergency vessel docking space, um, that project that Ryan is, is or has been involved with. Um, and also um, just the fact that that based on previous studies like that reconstruction of that wave attenuator in order to to protect the harbor that side of the harbor uh, more, it would need to be elevated and uh, I think just um, strengthened a bit. At least that's the, you know, the result of the previous study. So anyway, we should know about that within a month or so if we got that grant. And and the idea would be that um, if the study for or the, the preliminary uh, work that would get done through the grant would be done by December, which would then if the town was interested in actually pursuing that construction project, we could actually put in for a grant um, in like January or February um, to move forward with that, you know, or we can or we can wait depending on where the town is at and what you want to do. We just know that that piece of infrastructure um, is in need of repair and um so that's why we're we're doing this just so we can be ready to move forward with some type of construction project so that's what i got thanks gabe um just a rem reminder that our, our weather monitoring station vinylhavenweather.com is up and running it's down at the ferry uh, electronic weather and sea level monitoring station at the ferry dock with another location at the airport uh, stations data is stored long-term and publicly available to any interested party at vinylhavenweather.com. It's pretty cool. There's two cameras looking in both directions from the ferry. So you can sort of look, see the waves. You can see the fog. Um, and with huge thanks to Matt Ball and Craig Jewell, who have gotten this up and running and are maintaining it. We're partnering with Fox Island Electric Co-op on a LED streetlight project, which will be LED uh, dark sky approved. The project will begin rollout over the next few months. Uh, Fox Island Electric is currently assisting with an audit of the GIS mapping of Minel Haven streetlights, which it turns out we didn't have. So we'll know where all our lights are, where they're needed, how bright they need to be. And I think there's been some stuff in the wind recently about a new, um, what's the word I want, you know, pricing structure for these LED lights. So that's pretty exciting. Um, we recently participated in a program called Climate Change Ambassadors, which was a partnership with the North Haven Climate Working Group. Uh, program, the program was offered by a Climate to Thrive, which is based in Bar Harbor. It provided us with tools that can be shared, shared, shared with the community, ranging from information about climate change and resources about energy efficiency and electrification. 
uh, oops, sorry, Gabe and I, Margaret Quayley, Yvonne Thomas, Kathy Island, Maisie Richards, and Molly Miller from Vinyl Haven attended, and about four to five people from North Haven. And it was facilitated by uh, Island Fellows, Brianna Cunliff and Claire Oxford. So I think that's everything I have. Here's a list of your awesome Sea Level Rise and Climate Committee members. Mm -hmm. Um, we're always available for questions. We have our meetings uh, the third Tuesday of every month, and we'd love to see any of you at those. Any questions? All set. I'm all Super. set. Thanks, Thanks so Thank much. You. Thanks, Linnell. Thanks, Thanks Linnell. Sure. Okay. Hey, old business, domain, contract, review, and questions. So um, now I think that you all have a copy of the old um, contract and the new contract. They are extremely similar. Uh, this is a uh, five-year commitment. Um, I don't know of any alternatives. Did anybody have a, you know, did you have a chance to read it through and do you have any questions? I mean, this expires in September, so we still have time, but is there anything that you want me to do related to this contract? No, I mean, that's pretty much place to go. <laughs> People we work with and <clears throat> not surprised the price went up, but we um, had to expect we'll that. Everybody. Yeah, mm -hmm. we had to expect that. Is this something that, um, is this contract something that the selectman would prefer to sign or do you want to authorize me to sign you can, at the appropriate time? Yes, please authorize you. To. Uh, that would be, a, you'd have to make a motion mm -hmm. to do that. You guys all in favor of that motion for to have so Marjorie so sign? So Second. All in favor. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. 8B, airport survey. Um, so you had asked me to get a quote uh, for a new survey. And the, at that, um, from, these are the same people that did just recently did the survey over at uh, Armbrust Hill. It was 6,500. It's actually That's less than I one. thought it was going to be. For the new one. For the airport survey. 6,500? Yes. That's less than what I thought. Yeah, much less. And would you like to move forward with that then? Or? Yeah, I don't sure. see why not. Okay. okay. Nine, new business A, uh, Knox County monthly report. Knox County Sheriff's Office monthly report, excuse me. Any questions on that? There's a lot of activity. That's a good thing. Yeah, they're busy. Uh, Peter was going to be here tonight, but he was unable to attend. Right. I think they're both doing a pretty damn good job, but I've seen. People seem happy. I mean, I, have, I don't I haven't gotten any complaints. Let's put it, <laughs> let's put it that way. <laughs> I've been very positive. I think. No news. No good news. <laughs> yeah. Usually. And are, are they happy? They seem to be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think they are. Good. I did uh, sign the lease with the uh, um, medical center. The med I'm sorry, yeah. Island Community Medical Services for that apartment, but that's only going to be good through the end of November. Mm. So I don't know if we want to just keep advertising for something after that date. I think we need to proactively. Do you... Um, if they don't need it, they'll they would extend it if we couldn't find another place. Is that what she said? No, to you? Oh. no. I I'm asking. Yeah. That's a question. I'm sorry. If they if we can't find a place and they don't have anybody that needs to go in there, will they ex, um, I renew didn't ask that? that question? But okay. I can. Yeah. yeah. Just in case. I mean, we still should need to look, but in the event that something doesn't happen, then okay. Sooner or later, we're going to be faced with this. I'm afraid. Unless, mm -hmm. in fact, some other development happens. Mm -hmm. 
The other thing, should I continue with the, the Knox County Sheriff's Office questions or do you want to just do that during my report? You can do it in your report well, if you want. Whatever, okay. whatever you want to do, Marjorie. Do later. That's fine. Well, I mean, whatever you, is up to you. Whatever you want uh, to well, do. Paul Pinkham sent me an email that I didn't quite understand. Um, he wanted to know if the town wants to go forward with the town requested overtime, which consists of 16 hours per week in the winter and 24 in the summer. And I don't know anything about it. I wrote back to him and I said, I know, I know nothing of this. I mean, why would we, I said, why would we need overtime if we have two full-time deputies? Right. And he said it was something that was requested in during the previous administration with Andy Dore and, and previous selectmen. So I really don't know anything about it. And I said, do you want me to ask the selectmen? And he said, if you don't mind. So do we need it? I wonder if it's because we only have one deputy when Andy was here. Yeah. I bet that's why. Do you recall? So that? it's what was the um uh, exact overtime thing again? Which consists of 16 hours per week in the winter and 24 hours in the summer. Yeah, I don't we need clarification. I don't yeah. recall, but to me, if to me, if we've got two deputies. Yeah, we don't need to have it shouldn't that. Shouldn't be needed, but shouldn't you know, know. overtime is one of those things. If if, a dep if you got one deputy out on vacation or off island for training, well, that's stuff that's going to happen. But I don't scheduled overtime at that level doesn't really sound like something that's necessary. Right. If it was, I don't think so. Yeah, I don't. We think can so. check with Paul. I get an idea what he's where he's coming from, and does he think it's necessary? I don't. He his premise was that it was as requested by the town. Yeah, but that was the previous administration, yeah. correct? Right. So I would say that. I would say not unless needed. I mean, if there's obviously going to be times when overtime is needed. For I instance, during an emergency. During an emergency, Fourth of July, certain events, when when you have one officer on the island because the other one's out for training. Whatever the whatever the circumstances may be, there's. You know, we're not requesting. No, we're not requesting. Oh, no. 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 Okay. No, if they have to have overtime, that's one thing. But we're yeah. not going to have a set yeah. amount, right? Yeah. I agree. Kind of cool. <laughs> Is that it for? Yes, I'm sorry. Counted? No, that's you're okay. Thanks. Um. B, Dyer Island Bridge Association request. So um, Mark Hoffman came in a few weeks ago and said that they had formed an organization so that they could move forward to getting Dyer Island Bridge repaired. They call it a Dyer Island Bridge Association. And he said that they needed, um, let's see, we request that the town execute a recordable deed in accordance with main title standards conveying to the organization any interest of the town in the Dyer Island Bridge. So, you know, I can't remember the total conversation that we had, but I was specific about, well, I think I would have to contact the town attorney to ask about this, because number one, I'm not really sure if we need to, since we don't we don't have any interest in um, years ago, like back in 2009, I think it was, um, the residents of Dyers Island tried to get the town to take control or of the maintenance and, and it was voted down at a town meeting. And at the time I talked to an attorney and they said, you know, if you haven't maintained that bridge for more than 20 years, then it's simply um, discontinued by abandonment. You know, there's just, there's, so I guess I, what I'm saying is that I would have to contact an attorney to, to see if there was, you know. How to, how to do it or if we even need to. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I don't feel comfortable just doing a quick claim. Right. Right. No, I agree. At a public road to on Dyer's Island, or is it all private? It's all private. We plow up to the bridge, and then the rest is all private. They won't have it. We, I mean, from what I read, we have, the town abandoned them, abandoned it, or, or washed their hands of the bridge years and years and years ago. 
what that's what my friend. research tells yeah. me yeah check with the attorney i think i agree well, well it's, I just, that, it's so expensive i'm sorry pam it's just so expensive that i just wanted to make sure that it was okay if i called them and got some advice on this it says there are no known recorded deeds deeds or easements from the town conveying its interest in the bridge from 1875. Oh, and that was the other thing. He wanted me to put it on the annual town meeting warrant for a oh, vote. Right. Which is too late now. And um, it was just too late for me to get a, I mean, we were, when I got this, we were about to sign the final warrant. It, this was Monday, we were signing it Tuesday. I don't have a problem with you checking with the attorney to make sure to see okay. to get guidance. Yeah, just to get the answer. Okay, thank you. C Main Street I beam structure analysis. Oh, this is an interesting issue that we've been talking about for the last couple of months. Um. I think the one of the bridge, yeah, it was one of the bridge inspectors for the state um, gave, uh, I think they gave Phil the report initially, and it showed that this I-beam um, that is, if you can imagine, so there's the, the Main Street Bridge that is maintained by DOT, mm -hmm. and then it's a, just adjacent to the front of the Tidewater. Right. Tidewater has a about, what, 18 inches of sidewalk, maybe, right. maybe wider than that. And then there's a span in between where the, the concrete for the bridge stops and the, that little sidewalk starts. We think that that's where the I-beam is. So the reason that the town is involved in this conversation is that we need to open that up during the downtown project. And one of the water pipes that needs to be replaced is right there, right next to the I-beam. So um, this bridge person um, said that we really need to have some sort of analysis and uh, a structural analysis to see, you know, what really needs to be done. And then the other part of it is, well, what is the town's responsibility? And I think it kind of, it behooves the town to be involved because obviously it, it's so, you know, it's, I guess the debate is who owns what, right. you know, but nevertheless, we're going to be opening that road. We're going to be replacing that water pipe. And my question to the select board is, would you be interested in cost sharing with the Tidewater on this analysis of the substructure um, that's, you know, the bridge and that I-beam and then the Tidewater, you know? What are the consequences if it fails? Is it, is it the exactly. water pipe go? That's what we want to know. If there's a consequence like that, I think we'd have to do something. Well, that's, I mean, to your question, that's what we want to know. Right. I mean, what is what is going to happen? What are the chances of failure? If it does fail, then... Uh, what are the consequences? Yes. What's the cost of replacing it while, while we have things torn up versus the cost of waiting? Thank you, Tom. It later exactly. On. Um, that, that type is that of thing. 6,500 I saw on that? No, the estimate that I have is 5,000. Okay. And that's and just the analysis? Yeah. Yes, yeah. that's for... Uh, yeah. Now, now it's the replacement. Just the analysis. No, this is for the substructure inspection and analysis. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the road is going to be ripped up anyway, why not look at it, see what kind of shape it's in, and make a determination because mm -hmm. there's no sense to put anything new under there if this thing's just going to let go and well and here's another thought if we're going to have it torn up anyway why don't we just get to figure out the cost of having it replaced whether it now whether it's right. analyzing yeah. whether it's worth it's keeping it or not why spend five grand right. to decide whether it's 
bad or not, why not just plan on replacing mm -hmm. it? Well, uh, so of the 5,000, one of the conversations we've had is, well, what percentage would the town be willing to contribute to that cost? And so, I mean, we understand that it's, DO, Maine DOT says that it's on the Tidewaters property. Even all of us, you know, downtown project and the town engineer, and Phil, we're we're not a hundred percent clear on its location and condition. So, but we do feel it's important <laughs> to deal with it. I guess is what I'm trying to say. So, yeah, how much percentage wise would you be willing to contribute? How much is the tide water looking for? Mm -hmm. I I didn't really get an answer out of. I thought Phil was going to be here. But... Is it possible to get an estimate of what that would cost to replace that right up front? And that would might help the analysis. Well, that's one thing that we're trying to find out yeah. with this, to how much it would cost. Yeah, that's what the analysis is for, to find out one of the things. It is, okay. So it's going to cover that as well as determining the, the condition. Okay. I, I guess the question we would... If the domain DOT sees that it's on private property, mm. and so we've got a private business mm. owner looking for the town to assist in dealing yeah, with something that's on his pro on their property, it's, it is. It's very similar to the culvert issue we had. It's just something that. But the, I thought I thought they weren't certain who put it there. As I said, I'm not. That's well, the whole thing. Right. Nobody knows where this I beam came from. Yeah. And you know, whether it's but if it's a real risk to our fundamental infrastructure, to become a no brainer. We have to use us to be involved in we're gonna have to probably be involved anyway, regardless, because it's gonna be part of the project to you know, in the town. We're gonna we have a choice. So I, I guess see what Phil would like us to contribute. See what the and we'll look at it again. Was maybe. this the total Marjorie? Is five thousand then? You think? Well, that, that's the estimate that they gave to Phil Crossman. So it would be twenty five hundred dollars if we cost share. Mm -hmm. If we split. Okay. It. Yes. But maybe he's only looking for. A 64 is better. I don't What's that? What's he looking for? Is he looking for? Well, Marjorie's going to have to. Right. That's what I. But to me, if it was. It's no. a difficult situation. But yeah. I mean, I've talked to attorneys about this subject before in terms of a public private purpose. I mean, there are things that. Yes, you could argue that they're private property, but they serve a public purpose. Um, I understand. If there's a danger to the water pipe, we've got we got a we do have a role. And and the, it's a danger to the structure of the main street. Mm, potentially, right. potentially. The analysis will tell us that right, in that area. Yeah. 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 Okay. Get, the, get the best deal you can move forward. <laughs> well, hopefully, yeah, you can talk to Phil and I know what's going on. Okay. Um 9D, we're going to move to the next meeting. Yes. Okay. And so Peter and Millie can be, be here to talk about that for us, discuss it. I'd like to get that done ASAP. I was hoping tonight we could get it passed, but I think we're best to talk to Peter. Mm -hmm. I know. Does anybody have a Having read it, does anybody have any objections to it? Well, we've had several questions. meetings, and Millie made up. You know, we asked her to get the, um, you know, get the purpose, get the this made up, procedure made up, and asked um, Peter to make sure with his superiors that what we have proposed won't be anything that is. Illegal or okay. not. Yes, okay. with a wait for that one then. Right. But apparently, he, according to Millie today, she told me that Peter had talked to them and, and everything 
looked good, but still we should talk to him personally when he gets comes to the meeting. So okay. hopefully the next meeting he can be here. Yeah, there's been a few cars and whatnot that might have to be impounded. So okay, is that it for yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Except for Marjorie's Marjorie report. report. Nobody has any. I gave you a budget report. I think everything looks good. Looks very you know, good. Yeah. We're at overall 88.5%, but even departmentally, uh, I don't see any issues. Of course, this is as of June 6th, but that's pretty close to the year end, which yep. is 630. Right. So, very good budget. I think we're good. Yeah. Um. Uh, I was having conversations with our assessor, you know, looking at trying to do some estimates uh, on the tax rate calculation. It looks, the estimate that we came up with here, and we're not finished getting um, all of the new value. In other words, every year he goes to uh, everybody that had a building permit or anybody that we know, uh, new houses, obviously. Um, and he as he has added some value here, we're looking at maybe uh, twelve dollars and eighty cents per thousand. And right now it's at twelve dollars and thirty cents. But this is when we did this, it's got a hundred thousand dollars overlay, and we usually don't have that high of an overlay. So I don't know where the tax rate's going to end up, and you never really know until after town meeting. Right. So. Uh, I just wanted to tell you that uh, Travis and I have been working on that, and there's still some variables that we don't know, but um, that's what it's looking like. That's not, it's, yeah. that's good. Um, just to let you know, this came up today. Uh, we haven't finalized it yet, but um, apparently uh, a few years ago, um, ICMS got a grant to buy a... Um, Oh, I don't know what it's called now. Um, I'm sorry. It's a machine that does CPR. I'm sorry. It's a CPR machine so that a person doesn't have to do the, um, what am I Compression. the compressions. So they got a grant to buy this piece of equipment, but it's been sitting at ICMS for a few years now. And um, Ryan and Dinah have been having conversations and we're just developing a simple MOU. The annual maintenance is about um, $1,500. So for us, it would half of that would be 700 and I think well worth it. So I just wanted you to know that Ryan and uh, Dinah are developing just a simple MOU that we're gonna share this cost uh, and and actually use this piece of equipment and keep it on the ambulance. But okay. I just wanted to let you know because it is a, a cost share mm -hmm. thing, but this just kind of came in today. Um, so I have, so for this year in leases, we're gonna renew the um, Earl Hamilton lease and then the one at the old fire hall. Is that okay? Just to go ahead and renew those mm -hmm. familiar? I'm not familiar with either one, but I don't see any. I can't imagine any reason not to. Well, we've for years we've um, leased Earl Hamilton's land so that people can walk yeah. through there. Yep. Yeah. And it's a little more restrictive now than it used to be, but that's fine. No, no complaints. He's still allowing people to walk through there for a good part of the year. Yeah. But we uh, have an agreement with him that's uh, in writing. I use it often with my dog. So. Yeah, a lot of people do. And um, we rent the upstairs of the old fire hall. Yeah. You want me to continue with those yeah. leases? Okay, just want to make sure. And you all know about the election. And we had one foreclosure with the sewer uh, lane foreclosures that I sent out the notices. I am working with this person on maybe getting some help through the main housing. Um, there's a housing assistance program that uh, helped two I, people that I know of out here. And, you know, he's got a, a significant balance 
Um, anyway, I'm trying to help him go through some uh, an agency to get some help and we'll see what happens. But the town did foreclose on that piece of property. Anyway. I think that's all I have. Uh, uh, I think that's all I have. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, <clears throat> 11 report of members. Anybody have anything? Yes, I have something. Um, I, was it last year? The, no, I think Jake, Jake and DW were still on, so it must have been a couple of years ago. Um, we had someone talk to us about a moratorium for aquaculture. And at the time, we decided not to do anything right. about it. I think we need to re-look at that. I think we for should. any particular reason. I just think with the way the offshore windmill project is going, and I just feel like the island should really have some say, some kind of guidelines for people who want to buy thousands of acres of ocean to do whatever with. That could be overseas companies, and we'd have no authority um i can't remember the woman's name but she said it i still have the material it's happening down east and you know so they came up with a moratorium and i just think we should re revisit it not a bad idea at least to look at and understand the potential there's not a lot of applications in in um Penobscot Bay. i dealt with it a lot in um Castle. Casco Bay and Chibig, and um, that doesn't mean there won't be right. I I don't disagree, um, but the applications do have to go to um, Department of Marine Resources, and the towns towns do have some recourse, and um, there's always a scoping session for any aquaculture lease, and then there's a um, a public hearing, mm -hmm. and you can participate in those public hearings if you want, or you don't have to as a town. Um, now, I think the complaint that a lot of towns have is that uh, the Department of Marine Resources has their own rules, you know, that they have to go by. And if, if an application comes in and it's compliant with their rules, then they're probably going to approve it. They're almost obligated to. Right. So unless you have a, as a municipality, if you have a good reason why you oppose it, that this is a, an area where the, it, with a, a lot of lobster fishing yep. and you can prove a lot that. Of current activity or yeah. uh, that there's current activity there, or if it's a, a travel, you know, it's a, it's a, a lane that Federal people fair. travel. Yeah. Yes. Um, so there is a process. I just wanted to mention um, that it's not entirely true that we can't do anything, that a municipality can't do anything. We were, Shabik was successful in um, one application being denied. So, it, I mean, it's not impossible. I just wanted to mention that as no, history I and context. Yep. But um, if you want me to bring that information back to the board, I, yes. I have all of that. I just recall the moratorium was problematic. And that was one reason that we decided not to sign on to that. At that, that. point in time, well, it, we did. It was, and I mean, it didn't have to be word for word what their, because they gave us, they gave them us the example of what their said. I just think it's something we should revisit. I mean, it can't hurt to talk about it. Um, I mean, to to me, the offshore wind is going to ruin the ocean bottom. But for, what does that have to do with aquaculture? It, well, it if somebody wants to come and put a salmon farm on Vinyl Haven, mm -hmm. it's going to kill the bottom. Currently, we have no say. And currently, we have no uh, other, other than, than what public you... Public meeting, what you just described. Right. Yeah. I, I just a... think it can't hurt to revisit it. I'll bring that information back. Or... 
would be interesting if they want it. Yeah. What the what the uh, state of Maine has that would cover that too, because I don't have a clue what they what they what process they go through for for this these permits for a salmon farm or whatever. Well, there's there's three different kinds of permits. There's a limited purpose application. There's an experimental application, and then there's a standard. I think it's called a standard lease. And you start out with usually people start out with the LPA because they're only good for one year. And some people start out with an experimental, but they all, as soon as an application goes to Department of Marine Resources, mm -hmm. which is a state agency, then the town gets notice. Okay, so and so's submitted an application and they submit a questionnaire to. Um, the town and especially to the harbor master. Okay, what's going on out there in this particular space where this person is applying for an aquaculture permit? What already happens there? And that's usually filled out by the harbor master or in conjunction with the town administrator. Um, and then that application just goes through the various processes and the one of the first things is what is called a scoping session, and that means that there's a, a meeting in the t within the town, and people in that town get to come and listen to the person that's applying for the lease and ask questions of that person. You know, and in they have to say in their lease what they're going to do, whether it's um, kelp or oysters you know, well, yeah. salmon, whatever it, whatever it is. So there is an opportunity to ask questions there and then it proceeds. Um, and there is uh, also a public hearing that happens uh, t toward the end of the process. But again, one of the problems that we saw in Shabig is that um, even after we went through all of these processes and participated in every step and said, no, we would prefer not to have this aquaculture here in these waters, DMR still gave the license because they didn't think that, well, just to put it bluntly, they didn't think that our excuse was good enough mm -hmm. and the applicant followed all of their rules. So they yeah. still got the lease. And it really is to put upon the town the the town has to defend why exactly they don't want yeah. they you have can't, to prove right you can't just say we don't want it right yeah where has to be if they go reason. through all the, the the correct steps yes. I just think we it's something we need to revisit one of the things we might be able to do though is right during the hat of when fishing is at strongest somehow get some pictures of the bays around here with all the lobster traps in it <laughs> and say okay here's the evidence don't send it at all. Oh, they they send divers. DMR sends divers, and they dive on the um, area that of the application. But I meant we could. Oh. There are times when we could show a lot of lobster traps in an area. It's another time oh, we could by the buoys on the surface. Yes, I understand that. But they they actually send divers and yeah. look on the bottom. If you but, go, if you look, you can see all the um, licenses that have been. Awarded. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a skinny million. Oh, if you go, thing. if you go on the yeah, web, if you go on the website and you want to see exactly who has them and where they are, it's quite a list. It's mm -hmm. pretty amazing. But it's all um, kelp, kelp, uh, oysters. Um, do they do mussels? Mussels, yeah, yeah, mostly kelp, but. Either way, it's something, if you have information, I'd definitely love to see it okay. and look at it. Happy to bring it. Yeah. It was before my time. I feel like the pictures show all the lobster traps. <laughs> I, I can't foresee a big salmon farm on our shores because That's we awesome. don't have the, you know, we've got so many, it's not really a protected place for those. If, and another thing, Marjorie, you said, if it's near conservation, uh, land that's in conservation easement, they took that into consideration for what uh, on Shabig, right? The one that was denied on Shabig was um, we the town owned a piece of owns a piece of property 
and they were considering develop developing it for a new um how, uh, a place for the ferry to come in mm -hmm. uh, a new what would you call it? a new dock no, you know and we had just paid a lot of money to an engineer to um to do a study so what we said to DMR is said look if if this aquaculture lease goes through and we'll ne we're never going to be able to uh, develop this property the way that we want and see here's our study that we just did so they took that and said okay we will deny this lease so that was the way it was it wasn't a piece of conserved land necessarily so uh, there's a potential public use of that piece of water already yes but the, so the, i'm not sure if it's adjacent to conserved lands if that's i'm i'm not 100 percent sure yeah. okay. anyway thank you yep i have a couple of things that i uh that they're talking to sheep about and they had a concern about traffic signs out here and they are not sure that when we went down to 20, these feet of the signs are 20, whether than they've been approved by the state. And I asked him as a way for, for them to determine whether or not, because right now they're concerned if they gave someone a ticket, that it would just tossed aside if in fact they have not been approved by the state. I know Andy drove with somebody. I only thing I recall is, and I don't know who he was with, but he put, he and this, Andy thought the board wanted 20 miles an hour all over time. Mm. And no, that he, I don't know what, got, what happened, but that was not what we had asked for. We had asked for 20 mile an hour speed limit from like the bandstand through town. It makes sense. To, you know, to the other end of Main yeah. Street, yeah. Right. like by the fire station. We did not request every road in town to be at 20 miles an hour that so i don't know what why he well, thought that but that's what they did yeah and well, that was a lot quite a while ago but nobody pays attention to them anyway so but if they if they do start to do traffic stop so they need to know what 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 is legal what isn't legal, and i think that's what kurt and, and company will probably be doing you know, making doing? sure that we have that we have authorization for the 20 mile an hour Speed limits. What are they doing? He was going. I don't know what he was. No, we we talked about it, and I think he was oh, okay. moving forward. Just take a look, make sure that we did in fact have this on record and approved by the state. I don't think we did. I talked to David Allen, who used to do the traffic for the state. I mean, yeah, for Main DOT. He's got a different position now, and I asked him that question if our speed limits were approved by DOT, and he said he didn't think so. Yeah. They really should be. Uh, so I don't know who he was with when the yeah. when that took place. I don't. I just think it's worth checking to make yeah. sure we're, we're yeah. okay. The other one that I wanted to bring up is the no parking areas. I saw it the other day down in front of the sandbar where someone pulled up. Out of state people, they they don't. First of all, I'm not sure they understand what the lines mean because they mean different things in different states. So I'm not sure that putting the cross lines especially if you can't see them, are going to stop someone. So I think we ought to you know, seriously consider putting some no parking signs up in critical areas where we don't want people to park. So that they can be ignored. Yeah. Well, I think, that, well, yeah, but at least... If you way. have uh, yellow lines and, and it says no parking painted on the... It, that's pretty good indication. Yeah, yeah. You shouldn't if you, can, if you can it's see a fire it. lane or something. Yeah, isn't that what Lucas is going to? They're going to strike. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't remember the day that Millie said they're due to come out. But um, again, yeah, I saw some the other day, and they were, they were out of out of state people, and they didn't have a clue that they couldn't park there. It happens all summer long. Mm -hmm. Not okay. just there. <laughs> To every day, to every all day, yeah. doing U turns in the middle of the main street, <laughs> parking on the other side of the, the of Main Street by the Eagle, parking there, standing in the middle of Main standing Street, standing in the middle of Main, pictures middle of the main street, street, taking pictures of yeah, yeah. it just never ends for time. So, 
Okay. Or to consideration, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, no, that's fine. Tom, you got any, have Both anything? You would like to go, to, <laughs> you'd like to go to number 12? Like to to number 12. <laughs> okay. Because I'd like to go to marching practice. So moved. Six so o'clock. Okay, all in favor. I don't, I don't really want to go to grand practice. But no, but you have, <laughs> but we know you I can't wait. Congratulations.